David, your latest newsletter for The Atlantic is entitled, There is no MAGA movement without threats and violence. And you write in part, quote, the sheer scale of the threats and attacks from the right is deeply alarming. A Center for Strategic and International Studies Analysis charted a sharp increase in right-wing terror attacks during the Trump era. In a reasonable political environment, unified political messaging is manageable. It's normal. We've seen partisans close ranks before, but this is not a reasonable environment. Push back and the menace arrives. And if you're lucky, it's only a shrieking online mob. If you're a member of the media or a public official, it's simply a matter of time before the escalation becomes seriously troubling. I know this reality all too well. We're coming upon the seventh anniversary of September 17th, 2015, when MAGA white nationalists first targeted my family. Since that time, we've been threatened, doxxed, and harassed. We don't know when Trump will finally exit American politics, but after seven years, we know this much. There is no MAGA movement without threats and violence, and the longer he stays in politics, the more he tears the American social fabric and the more dangerous politics becomes. David, I'm always, um, and I, I, you know, the, the shock opera continues and I'm, I'm the one that's shocked. But I, I am mm -hmm. always shocked that um, those on the far right and those um, who cover the right or on right, right-leaning news sources, um, don't see the danger that's right before them when they promulgate conspiracy theories and the hatred of Donald Trump. Mika, they do see and they don't care. Okay, they don't care. That there is that much hatred that is on the far right right now where they know exactly like this is this is not day one of this phenomenon. This mm -hmm. is year seven of this phenomenon on the right where there is uh, extremist rhetoric results in extremist actions. And so mm. by now this is known, by now this is known. So far right media is intentionally whipping up the far right public into a, a fervor. And some of them we now know, and we've seen this now, some of them choose violence. You know, all of this civil war talk, 99% of it is just people mad online. But a few of them pick up a rifle and do something about it or pick up a weapon and do something about it. We saw that last week in Cincinnati, and we've seen it across the country. Look, I mean, this isn't just an isolated instance when you see threats, violence, intimidation. Uh, there was a Reuters study that tracked about 850 individual threats against even local election workers by Trump supporters in 2020 and into 2021. It's a terrifying environment, and people know what they're doing when we're whipping up this fervor. Well, and, you know, David, so you're right. Some, some choose violence, a very rare number choose violence. But just mm -hmm. really quickly, just to underline to people at, at home who don't understand the intensity of this cult-type behavior. Mm -hmm. um, so you, for seven years, you've been target of doxing, of threats, uh, uh, a lot of really horrible, horrible things. Uh, yeah. And I was accused of being a murderer for, you know, uh, 12, 13 times by the president. Uh, both of us uh, had security problems after that. Um, and um, and yet all of my friends and not all of my friends, but a lot of my friends. And I would guess probably 95 percent of the people that I grew up with at First Baptist Church in Pensacola and Meridian, Mississippi, and, you know, and church I went to in Tuscaloosa, Alabama and Shambly, Georgia. I bet they voted for Donald Trump. And I, I actually, after the election, I just very calmly, I asked, he said, OK, so he said that I um, he said that I should go to jail and that I should be convicted of murder. And he spread this horrible, hateful lie that really hurt the family mm -hmm. and the husband was begging him to stop and he wouldn't stop. The cruelty is just extraordinary. So tell me, why did you vote for him? I'm not mad. I just want to know why. And there mm -hmm. were no good reasons. One of my closest friends said, 
Uh, because of regulations. <laughs> what are you supposed to do with that? And I'm right, sure right. I'm sure you experience the same thing with people in your church, people that you grew up with, the neighbors, despite the hatred leveled against you. They're still part of that political cult. Yeah. You know, it was really two kind of categories of people. Close friends stood with our family, stand with our family to this day. And then you take one degree removed from close friends and the primary anger that they feel or the primary sense of grievance that they feel when you describe all of this is that anger or grievance that I have, quote, used the actions of the few to turn me against Trump. So they're primarily mm -hmm. angry, not at what has occurred, but that because that those things occurred, it has made me much more deeply suspicious of what Trump is doing to this country. That's sort of the extent. But thankfully, I have an orbit of close friends who see through all of that and, you know, stand with our family. But that's the level, uh, Joe, is this mm. idea that the real grievance isn't that cascade of threats. The real grievance is that you've used the cascade of threats to turn against the MAGA movement. But, but Matt Lewis, it's Donald Trump who inspires those threats. It's Donald Trump that after his lawyers wouldn't give him what he wanted, put out a tweet at one or two in the morning saying, come January 6th, it's going to be wild. It's Donald Trump that delivered the inflammatory language. It's Donald Trump who told the Secret Service members to let people come into his rally with weapons. And because, as he said, then they were going to march up to the Capitol. It's Donald Trump that's fanning the flames now with one lie after another, turning people against law enforcement officers. It's Donald Trump and his allies who have put the FBI and their family members who are doing their jobs, conducting that search in pursuit of the law, putting their lives in danger. It's Donald Trump at the head of this who's inspiring the violence. So I, I don't understand the logic. It's almost <laughs> like an abused wives syndrome or something, right? We're like, um, you made him mad, David. You, this is really your fault, David. You invited this. You, <laughs> you, you made Donald Trump mad. And the, Trump is never, to his supporters at least, he's never responsible for his behavior. It's always someone else. He gets to play the victim. And it's never about what he did to start the problem. It's your response which compared to what he did is nothing. It's, 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 it's so, it, I guess it's gaslighting, it's infuriating, it's frustrating, and we're seeing it now. The problem isn't that Donald Trump, you know, let's just use the latest example, uh, kept yeah. all sorts of, of, of top secret documents that he had no business keeping at Mar-a-Lago. That's not the problem. The problem is the law enforcement, after negotiating for months, dared to try to get the stuff back. And for people who are Trump supporters, that is how they see everything. That is how they see the world. And David, I would venture to say even my friends and family, people that I love, people that I know to be very, not my immediate family, but people that I know to be very good, decent, honorable mm -hmm. people in every other facet of their lives. If Donald Trump came after me today and, they, and brought them mm -hmm. with the pitchforks and the lanterns, they wouldn't like it. But they'd still vote for Trump. I'm pretty sure they would mm -hmm. still vote for Trump. Oh, I guarantee you they would. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 guarantee, I guarantee you they would, because, David, my my close relatives who I've known my entire life say, oh, what he did was terrible. And I said it was terrible. I said, but you voted mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. I say, OK. OK. How the kids doing? <laughs> I mean, what, what do you say after that? Right. Yeah, it's it's constantly because you're you're telling me that you're going to support an evil Democrat over Donald Trump, even in these, you know, so you, there's no set of facts that make Donald Trump worse than the Democrats. And, but so much of this, Joe, is the product of the news bubble that they're in. I mean, they're in a news bubble yeah. that is telling them that the Democrats are a world historic threat to the very existence of this country. So in that circumstance, mm -hmm. you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, and we're going to have to break a few eggs to save this country. And I'm sorry, David, if you face some terrible things from some extremist MAGA people, but we've got a country to save here from the, you know, a, a historic threat. And this is that level of threat that constantly ratchets up 
that teaches people to excuse, to overlook, to justify or rationalize all kinds of behavior they would never have rationalized before. Violence. Senior. They're to excuse violence, and that's what they're doing. Senior columnist for The Daily Beast, Matt Lewis, and contributing writer at The Atlantic, David French. Thank you both for this important conversation. And